we are about to depart on the craziest helicopter trip yet. This is gonna be a trip to a place called Newfoundland, which is near and dear to our hearts because it's our home. It's where we're from, it's where we grew up, it's where we met. We're living in Buffalo, New York right now, and we're gonna fly our helicopter back to the island of Newfoundland. So if you don't know where that is, just picture going northeast, keep going northeast, past Maine, past New Brunswick, past Nova Scotia, into the ocean, and then you'll end up hitting an island, and that island is the island of Newfoundland. Here is the Millennial Falcon. This is our helicopter. It's a Robinson R44 Raven 2. This is something that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to explore Newfoundland with a helicopter. And this long haul trip back, it's going to be 14 hours one direction. So like any of our helicopter trips, we're kind of concerned a little bit about weather. Newfoundland doesn't have the best track record for having the nicest weather, not like here in Buffalo. If you ask any Newfoundlander about the weather, they're going to tell you RDF, rain, drizzle, fog. It's rainy, it's drizzly, it rains sideways, and it's foggy and you can't see shit. The one variable you cannot control is the weather. And in small little helicopters like this, the weather needs to be perfect as far as visibility is concerned. If you have poor visibility, you cannot fly. I'm a little bit concerned about weather and getting stuck. We're gonna have to be really strategic about a lot of things for this trip, but uh, weather, weather's gonna be interesting. Since weather is what we can't control, we maybe hold up for a few days waiting for it. So that makes planning very difficult. We can't really make accommodations ahead of time. So we're gonna have camping gear in the back. If we need to rock it, so be it. Given the known hospitality of Newfoundlanders, I feel like we're gonna get taken in in a lot of random places. You won't be surprised to hear this, but I'm nervous. I'm so, I'm so nervous about this trip. I think I'm nervous about a lot of things. A, it's our biggest trip yet. So, you know, obviously I'm concerned about weather and fuel and emergencies. Flying over Quebec for a large portion of the trip and we don't speak French. So bathrooms are always a thing that I'm thinking about. Food, camping, what if it's raining? So I'm thinking about worst case scenario on all fronts, which is probably not the best thing to do. I'm looking forward to it, seeing it completely different side of the province coming back as a tourist versus like a person who actually lives there. This is a going to be a trip of a lifetime. I ordered a bunch of stuff for a trip. These are called underwear. Yeah, I bought some underwear that you can wash in the sink. These look like they're going to be way too small for me. Oh, 100%. Campers toilet paper. Apparently these pillows were like rated pretty good. They're like camping pillows that like they blow up, but they also have like a memory foam thing. And they pack up pretty small, which is great. And I bought us some microfiber towels that are packed small and can dry quick. Cause I figured like if we were camping and have to shower in like a lake, apparently these ones dry quick and they also come with a face cloth, which I like. They're just like microfiber. Enough of a towel to like. Oh yeah dry yourself with. I'm trying to keep everything in the helicopter organized because we don't know yet if we're gonna be camping or if we're gonna be staying in a place. So we wanna be prepared for the worst, which is camping every night. So we're taking like camping gear, stuff we can cook food with, just some emergency food, bathroom stuff, food cooking stuff. When we came up from Texas, it was like, a shit show in the back and trying to get out bags and find things on the fly was like really difficult. We thought that this would probably be the easiest way since this is going to be our most intense trip yet to keep everything in boxes with labels. We'll see. If this system works, this will be a good system for us for like other trips. I like a specific blue box for bathroom stuff in case like either of us have to like land the heli and shit in the woods. But everything we're trying to take is like compact, right? So we've kind of loosely decided on some places that we want to hit. The way that most people get on the island of Newfoundland is you take a ferry. And that ferry leaves from North Sydney, Nova Scotia. It's either eight hours to the southwest tip of the island. If we flew over that stretch of water, that would be 45 minutes of flight over open water. I don't want to do that. Or it's 14 hours to the Argentia port. We're going to fly north all the way through Quebec, all the way to blanc sur blanc Quebec, and then cross over, and it's only a six minute flight over open water. So that's probably the safest thing to do, but it adds a whole bunch of hours onto our trip going around. That'll put us on the northern peninsula of the island. So before we cross over there, we're actually wanting to hit a place in Labrador called Battle Harbor. Right here. If we can work out the schedule with this place called Carpoon Lighthouse. So you say it, Carpoon? I have no idea. Yeah, I, see, I'm from Newfoundland and I probably am saying half of these words wrong. We could theoretically land a helicopter there, but the problem is is that we can't say, oh, we're gonna be here on Saturday night, you know, book the spot for us because we might be there Saturday, we might be there Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, who knows? If it doesn't work out, it might not work out. So, Gross Morn, 
is on our next spot. The big variable here is talking to Parks Canada and getting a permit or a waiver to be able to fly and land in the park. So the next spot on the list is Francois or Francois, depending on how you ask. There's not a whole lot of places to stay. One of Becky's family members, uh, their family's from there, so we may be able to somehow swing something. At the very least, we'll be able to set up a tent in their lawn. Fogo Island is an island off the island of Newfoundland. Hopefully, we can stay the night there. That's been on our bucket list for so long. As you can see, a lot of these destinations we may not make it to. In some of these instances, we may just have to camp out, but I think that's part of the adventure. But it's also why Becky's getting really anxious and nervous about the whole experience. Have we camped? We've never camped before. We've never camped before. There's only a few fuel stops on the whole island that sell av gas, which is the kind of gas that we take. Deer Lake being one of them. Long Sablon right before we jump over onto the island. St. John's is, is the other big hub. The big wild card is right in the middle of the island, Gander. They don't actually have av gas at the airport officially. A friend of my aunt's uh, runs the airport there, so I'm hoping that she can <laughs> get him to sell me some fuel. <laughs> if he won't, then we gotta figure something else out because that's a huge gap in the middle of the island that has no fuel. So between all the stops, not knowing if we have accommodations, only limited number of fuel stops, and a big question mark on if Gander in the center of the island is gonna be able to accommodate us with fuel. Uh, that's sort of the major hurdles we have to get over. We gotta figure out what camera gear we're bringing, gotta figure out what clothes we're bringing. This is gonna be a multi-part series, by the way, so stick around for the rest of the episodes. We need a tent. We do need a tent. Yeah. We bought a tent. We are putting the doors back on and loading up the helicopter. We're gonna do it the night before for once because I feel like we need to be very careful with the weight and balance since, since this is such a huge trip because we have to be uh, within a certain weight and we have to, have to also be within a certain center of gravity. So I've got an app on my iPad that can do that. There's a lot of stuff. More than, I feel like we had, I was like, oh, we have too much stuff. And then I saw it in a pile and I was like, oh, we don't have a lot of stuff. Then we brought it here and I was like, shit. We have a lot of stuff. So what we're doing right now is um, kind of like unpacking the car in pieces, figuring out where everything's going in the helicopter and then weighing everything because we have to make sure we have proper weight and balance in the heli. It's kind of giving us time before we leave tomorrow to like make sure we have everything and that everything fits and we don't need to kind of go back to the drawing board. Gotta give Becky credit. She basically planned all of the items that we're taking, which is great because that freed me up to do things like plan the trip call places, plan the route, check the weather, all the things that have to do with aviation. And Becky can do all the things that have to do with travel. So it's a nice delegation of tasks. I feel like I'm being very bent, like too bent. Because everything is in like labeled boxes. But it's I think- It's pretty adorable actually. It's all Food like... and cooking. Listen, if this all looked the way that you had that bubble cover looking, nothing would fit in this helicopter. Oh, that is true. Uh, affirmative. But that's pretty satisfying how well your bag fits. Isn't it? Yeah. You should have got one of those as well. That's right. That's pretty satisfying too. All of this perfect packing that I have done is just gonna get completely fucked on the first night, especially when chaos Nicholas gets in. PFDs. That's not the most satisfying thing I've ever seen. This is like a real life game of Tetris. It is. <laughs> that was when the, the long Tetris piece came down. You got four lines all at once. This is proving to be a little bit more difficult than I thought, but we're getting there. We don't have a lot of stuff left. We do have a lot of stuff left. We definitely have a lot of stuff left. <laughs> we do. Oh my God. We're packed to the fucking brim. It's actually lighter than taking two passengers on the back. Actually, it's space that's the commodity here, not actually weight. Buffalo departure, helicopter 300, Whiskey Zulu, departing from Buffalo Airfield on route to Rochester, requesting flight following. Radar contact five miles south of Buffalo Airport, proceed on course. I cannot believe that we are starting this trip right now. It's crazy. It's so crazy, we've been talking about doing this for so long. Quick detour in Rochester. Nice to meet you, man, yeah, in person, yeah. I've connected with this guy on, I guess, through Instagram. Your claim to fame is? 
flying around the world, doing, I don't know, flying to crazy places in a small airplane. There you go, perfect. So check his channel out. Uh, he was nice enough to lend us his Sirius XM weather module. We're gonna be in really rural places in Canada that has no cell phone reception. Um, so weather's gonna be hard to come by, so that is gonna be a lifesaver, I have a feeling. Thanks, man, appreciate it. Yeah. All right, off to Canada. So we're a little bit behind schedule, but we're hoping to make it to Montreal tonight. Uh, we just gotta refuel before we cross the border. So we're going to Messina International Airport. Never been there before. Helicopter 300 Whiskey Zulu Rochester departure radar contact proceed via upon course Messina. Roger that, zero Whiskey Zulu. My butt is so sore. It's our first fuel stop of many, and then we're gonna be crossing the border into Canada shortly. Then we're gonna decide whether we want to stay in Montreal overnight or make it up to Quebec City. Depends on the weather. Last night was so grueling. We got into Quebec City at two o'clock in the morning. 2.06 a.m. I think we called six hotels and there were no vacancies. So finally we found one. We're gonna go to the hotel now. So we're standing outside this place called Avjet and uh, we're waiting for an Uber with all these bags. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired too. I have a sandwich in my cooler and I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> we left Rochester and got to Messinger? Messinger? Mes Messima? Messima? I don't, I don't remember. Kilo, Kilo Mike Sierra Sierra is what it is on the sectional. <laughs> got fuel, got out, flew into Montreal. First time ever doing that. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Cleared customs in Montreal and it was like midnight. Yeah, it was legit just like skiz touchdown, cleared customs, right back up. We got into the hotel about 2.30, 3 o'clock, and thank God that I had that sandwich in the cooler because we crushed that shit. Yeah, that was good. It's currently 10.20 Saturday morning, and we're trying to make it all the way to Labrador today. But we do have some weather. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So there's a weather system just north of us going from west to east. We can get around it then we'll be okay. After that weather system, it's a clear shot all the way to Labrador. If we don't leave early enough, we're not gonna be able to make the full six or seven hour trip to Labrador. And I don't wanna fly in the dark here over these rural areas because there's no actual light, so you can't really fly VFR. Tomorrow, it's supposed to rain all along the more northern part of our trip on the coastline of Quebec. And I'd rather encounter weather where there's lots of small airports I can divert to down here rather than traveling north, hitting weather and there being absolutely nothing. We're gonna pack up. Head to the airport. We took too long and didn't get out on time. <laughs> now we're stuck here. Probably cost us the whole day actually, because now we're not gonna get out of here. Even if we do get out, we're only gonna make half the journey. And then we're gonna get probably stuck somewhere in the middle of Labrador. And then it's supposed to rain all tomorrow, all Monday. So we actually probably just burn three days. So we're basically on top of this rock here. We have just enough fuel to get to our destination airport. We can't do any more diversions. It is what it is at this point. I'm so nervous. We have a headwind at all. We're gonna be fucked. We had just enough fuel to get to Blanc -Sa Blanc from where we were. The wind had significantly picked up overnight. By the time we packed up our tent and everything, it, the ceiling dropped a little bit again. Will they make it? Only time will tell. Tune in on the next oh episode God. of Becky and Chris goes to Newfoundland in a helicopter. It's too early. I'm dying. It's 10.20 a.m. This juice bag smells like pickles. Did you say you farted and you grossed yourself out? Yes. <laughs> Ew, Chris. If you don't know about Newfoundland, it's kind of like filming in an airport. <laughs> I'm most worried about dying. Are they about to land here? When has there ever been this much activity at this airport? There's never. Never. 